Jeremiah, he is on fire. We're bouncing around. I decided to give an impromptu on, on riches and, and, and positive confession stuff and, and, and how it, 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 it can be a little confusing. But if you take your time, you, you, you'll get this. James is very serious about what he's talking about in, in uh, 4, 4.15 of his book. You can't be rich in confidence and rich in money. That's what James said also in his book. Has not God chosen the poor who are rich in faith? Which means you're rich in receiving heaven. The rich are receiving their reward now. It's very simple. Now let's get to the name. That's 16 on my list in Romans. We, we got to get through this. We're, I wanted to get done with this today, but it, the board, we're, we're, we'll, 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 get, we'll, we'll get halfway through this. One moment. It's been very dry here. I don't know what's going on. Um, and by the way, this is Jeremiah with New Covenant. We greet you in the only name given amongst men by which you must be saved. We do everything in that, in that name, and every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And, of course, uh, everybody. Every creature is going to kneel down and say, Jesus is Lord. I talked to some people recently, here recently, and they said, they, said they, they don't want to be a Christian, and there's no such thing as God or whatever. They're going to kneel down uh, on the Lord's day, and, and they're, they're going to have to kneel down. You're going to have to kneel down and declare that Jesus is Lord. Everybody. Even the devil. Let's get to the name right now. Jeremiah, the name. Well, the name is... Uh, call upon the... Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's, that, that's the goal here, is to get everybody to call upon the name of the Lord. And I already mentioned in the previous video that the name means God saves, or Yah saves, or Yahshua, Jesus saves. That's what the name means. It also means that God wants to save. He does everything he can legally to push everyone into salvation. And that, of course, is the path of salvation. Got it? So when you call on the name, you're calling on God saves. That's who you're calling and you're saying, save me. And of course, now you're going to call the name. You're going to receive the name, which means you're going to receive God saves. And then you're going to go out for the name so that other people can be saved. They went out for the sake of the name. They went out so that the name can be glorified. And that means that people are going to get saved. By you yielding to the power of God's love force. Saying yes. And going. Let's get to active duty. Paul mentions this, and, and it's in, in a couple of his books. As I'm synthesizing his books right now, uh, Galatians is a little different. Uh, Romans and Corinthians have a lot in common. That's why I stuck these two together. Okay. Pretty soon we'll, we'll be doing Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, Colossians, Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, Titus, and of course Philemon, and then Hebrews. That's all Paul. We're going to skim through Hebrews, probably. Remember, I'm going to, I'm going to skim through the New Testament this year. We're going, to, we're going to touch on a lot of big points. A lot of heavy hitters. We're not, going to, we're, not going to hit, we're not going to hit every heavy hitter. However, we will hit all of the required uh, heavy hitters. Because that's in living bread. Let me share something with you. You, you. you don't have to be too burdened about doing what you have to do. Uh, when you listen to this ministry, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what you need to do so that you can you can rest assured that you are you are on the narrow path. OK. It's not that difficult to go through those items. And that's why I'm going to share with you living bread once every two or three weeks here. I have a template for living living bread. Living bread is number one, living bread is number two, living bread is number three, living bread is number four, on and on it goes. I'm going to enumerate those for you, okay? I just finished enumerating what I'm going to teach on agape. I'm not going to go through every aspect of agape. 
of love. I'm going to just give you a couple of points. I'm going to stop. I'm not going to give you every aspect of the rapture. I, I've only got about 20 or so uh, points on the rapture. I'm going to stop right there for now. I'll repeat those 20 for another six months at least. I have 52 plus categories for this entire yearly matrix here. All the subjects and playlists available. Right here. Okay? I just put 711 up, which is the same thing as wisdom. AM, PM is like the parable of the sower. Uh, that is periods of Christianity. So to say we're sizzling like a fried egg here, we are smoking here. Those are all the templates I have for this year. All of the matrices I'm going to share with you. And of course we have the April matrix, which I've decided to make the basis of this ministry. Which is, what are the basic components of Christianity? Most of them. And obviously living bread is, is the key for us to make sure that we have accomplished all of these things that are required of you. Right? Repentance and baptism. Right? It's required of you to speak Jesus Christ come in the flesh, or God has come in the flesh. Unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. So, so obviously, for a fourth grader, it might, be, it might be important to believe that he is he, Elohim, Elohim, many in one pronoun. Got that? It's not that hard. And by the way, the reason why I mentioned through many dangers, toils, toils and spins, they, they've had, they're, they're having another tornado watch here uh, in Indiana. Well, just, I think just about the whole state. And recently there's been some bad ones here nearby. Now personally, I've made it through living through gangs in the neighborhood. Uh, when I got older, gangs came to our neighborhood. Then I started hanging around some nice friends who lived in really gang-infested neighborhoods to visit them. A lot of chalk on the ground for dead, dead, dead people, and, and that's the way life is. So I, 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 that's why I sing that song. Uh, Through many dangers, toils, and spins, I have already come. I was at the beach by myself. I was a very adventurous child, not very intelligent in many ways. <laughs> I, I went to the beach, and I didn't even know the riptides existed. I got caught in like two riptides because I really felt like I was Aquaman or something. I really enjoyed the, the beach and the water a lot, so I spent a lot of time there. When I was only like 16, 17, I would, I would ride my bike uh, for long distances to the water there. I, I didn't live that close to the beach, but it was close enough for, to, to, to cruise on the bike. And I've, I've, I was almost hit by cars, of course, and, and there, there weren't bike lanes then, and, 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 and I got caught in the riptide, and I, and I didn't know what to do, and I just barely survived that incident. Then I got hit by a, a, a small, um, uh, a big wave one day. And I, I couldn't find the ground and I couldn't find the air. And about a minute went by and I found the ground. You know, I've been threatened by gangs more than a couple of times with knives and a gun and uh, life is not, it's not an easy trip. It's the valley of the shadow of death. They have undivided highways here in Indiana uh, by, the, by the thousands here, hundreds rather. So instead of dividing the highway, they put PBS broadcasting, public broadcasting stations on, on, the, on the web that you pay for. 
and, 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 a, and a stadium for football. The money for the PBS broadcasting and the money for the st st stadium, uh, if anybody's wise around here, should have been um, put in to make the roads better and to put up a, a, a divide in, in the highway. There's no reason why you should have a, a highway where people are going 55 miles an hour on ice, semis, going in the opposite direction with only a few inches separating you. Furthermore, there's no shoulder on a lot of these roads. And furthermore, there are telephone poles inches away from you to the right. So any kind of swerve in your vehicle, you're going to hit a telephone pole at 55 miles an hour. All of this is called unwise. And through many dangers. Now let's move on as, as, as I mentioned the fact that that, uh, that I've already had what, what's called Amazing Grace. And let's talk about that song for a minute. We're going to move on from uh, name here. Uh, we can go on the name forever. Uh, I have a lot of points about the name. Uh, because the name, is, the name is a deep subject. But obviously the, the Romans are, and, the, and the Corinthians and so forth, they called on the name, and now they're called, okay? And they're called to be saints, pure ones, and they're called to be servants. That means to get busy and get into some love duties. Because God is love. But wisdom and making good decisions and all of this with dangers and, and all of this, it's, it's just a part of life that, that it, it makes you uneasy at times, even, even if you have the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> this one to 17 on my list active duty we just talked about active duty uh, the master calls it lamps full on rapture day okay it basically means that you're doing what you're supposed to do as a Christian uh, uh, how, how you're doing it whatever let's let that go <laughs> there's a million things that you could should be doing let's go to 18 which is pray so pray is um, let's go back to active duty one more time. Active duty is relative to perfect submission. We have that song, This Is My Story. Praising my Savior all the day long. What is your story? Your story is you're on active duty. That's your story. And that's perfect su submission, which means proper submission. It means complete or proper. When the master says you are complete, and he uses the word perfect in, in your Bible, it refers to you doing what you're supposed to do. Is that, is that hard to figure out? That's, no. That means that you're doing what you're supposed to do, which is you're, you know, you're hungering after, you want to do the right thing, and you're, you're telling evil to get out of your face, and, and you're being very humble and nice to people. Is that hard to figure out? No, it's not. Let's move on to prayer. So prayer is another big issue, of course. Paul prays for these people. And when we mentioned Paul praying for the people here, uh, we mentioned, we just went through David and Psalms. He prays for the people. You'll notice that Solomon doesn't necessarily pray for people. Is that, that's the difference between Solomon and David, his father. His father is a more person-y person, a personal, friendly guy than Solomon is. Solomon's probably a little bit more of a spoiled kid. And David is a better example of what a Christian should be. Plainly stated. And Paul is a good example of someone who's just like David. He's a king. He declares himself a slave to, the, to God, even though he's a king. And he is praying for his brethren all the time. Okay, Paul knows a lot of people's names here. At the, end of this, at the end of this book, he goes through a litany of names of people he knows, and he might have only met them one time. And he's telling them that he cares for them over a short period of time. Uh, okay, that's just the opposite of the guy I see on TV who has 40,000 people coming. He doesn't know anybody. Okay, who's doing the right thing? Paul or the guy on TV? Can you come to the proper conclusion there? I mean, what is there to say about that? 
Okay, it's self-evident. You know, this, this guy talks about praying for people. He loves them, you know, he doesn't really know them necessarily very well. And, and he's made a connection with them. And he's a good leader. That, that's what makes a good leader. And, and our number one leader says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I will be with you all the way to the end. Let's go to prosper. Prosper means, Paul, Paul, Paul talks about prosperity in terms of spiritual prosperity. He, he talks about prosperity in terms of putting something down in your bank in heaven. Not getting a reward now by doing church duties. To him, as he stated in Romans, a prosperous journey. Furthermore, Paul obeys Matthew chapter 6. This guy is a study in doing the right thing. That's it. And, you know, and, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll stop and point out, you know, what he's doing. You know, he, 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 this guy is on the ball. He is without question a mature Christian man. He's doing exactly what he's been instructed to do. That's why he's a teacher, and that's why he is the leader, and that's why we're happy to have somebody like him who has submitted themselves in complete submission to the Lord so that we can learn what we need to learn in the Word of God. That's the bottom line. And, and, and he never mentions any amount of money, never. He deals with finances, but he never mentions the amount. That's obeying Matthew 6. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is giving. When I mention things I do here, I do it reluctantly. I don't want to mention my works that much at all. I have to periodically. It doesn't mean you can't do it. It's just how you do it. You understand that? Let me give an example. Boots on the ground, active duty. We just mentioned that. I've been called to action duty, to active duty rather, pardon me. I used to help take care of, in, a, in an old people's ministry, uh, the elderly, that's a better word, uh, um, with hospice care and so forth. I was a member, but I, I wasn't uh, uh, um, uh, doing very much, but I did help. And the thing is that I don't, I don't want to talk about it. But, but I do mention it periodically to do things like that because it's an office and it's something that you might want to get into as the Lord leads you. That's the point. I had somebody tell me they wanted to work in a dog kennel or something. I told them that's fine. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with that per se. However, I would suggest that you, you, you join a church and join some sort of human assistance activity. Because that's what you've been commanded to do in active duty on the active duty roster. There's no spiritual gift in the church for taking care of animals. It doesn't mean you can't take care of animals, but you're, you're obviously not, not supposed to prioritize that as a church member. That's a, a chicken can figure that out. Why? Because there's no office for it. But there are offices available with a business card of you participating in church in church activities to helping the pastor or the assistant or or, or, or sweep the parking lot. You, you got to do something. That's the point. Okay. And, uh, if you want to be a Starbucks Christian and, and go to Starbucks every day and go online on Amazon, and, and you may not be a Christian. I don't know. You know, you're in the gray zone. The reason why you're in the gray zone is because you don't have a business card. And you should have some sort of a business card. You don't have to have a business card, but you but you should. You go around to some church, a belong to a church, and, 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 you, and you, you, you do the cleaning, you can make yourself a business card. I clean churches. I'm a, I'm a church janitor. I had over five years of janitor work when I was growing up.
And I'm glad I was able to help people who couldn't help themselves in the hospital. I, I cleaned up and helped people who could not take care of themselves. I'm not going to brag about it. I'm just telling you that, that, that that's just what we do, and we open ourselves to these kinds of duties. The active duty roster. And, and back to Luke chapter 6 again, which you can't get away from, is I got something pressed down and shaken together. Somebody asked me, are you getting... What, what kind of compensation are you getting for the service you're providing? Because they, they noticed that I was providing the service. You notice they didn't offer to help. First of all, that means they're a Babylonian. They're not a Christian. I didn't say anything to these people who, who inquired as to what I was getting. I, I didn't answer them. I went on about my business. Here's the point. They don't understand that what I was getting was heart-to-heart -heart communication. That's what the Christian life is. It's supposed to be. Not the TV guys. It's the real life for us Quaker Protestants over here in Quaker land is we're not down south greedy people kind of people. Uh, uh, sons of slave owners and, 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 and greedy uh, uh, people from the hood or something. You know. Here's the point. The point is that, is that we deal with heart-to-heart -heart communication and that's our riches. That's our prosperity. That's 19 on my list here. And Paul talks about that being prosperity. Now, he also mentions later on that, that prosperity can be something that you need to receive monetarily. But he makes no such a, a notion as to how much or when or where. It's none of your business. And furthermore, he sees getting something from somebody, anyone, as an opportunity to help others and to build the church. Not for personal uh, luxury items. That's why the master says you'll know the fake people by their fruits, which means they get money and they buy greedy little uh, pink poodles and, you know, and, and diamond cars and, and gold-plated cars and stuff. Let's go to 20, which is comfort here. Jeremiah, what, what's comfort? Well, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is called the comforter. That means it's going to comfort you. God wants to comfort you. That's why he calls his spirit comfort. Just like my parents wanted to comfort me, the Father wants to comfort you. And he gives you the, the, the comfort force, the comfort battery juice. And that's called perfect love. It's, it, it's, it's love that is intelligent. It's love that is wise. It's love that might spank you. It's love that might yell at you to get you in line. Oh, that's what, that's what it is. It's fellowship with the Christian brethren and obviously with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is a part of this lesson number one here in this ministry. Uh, playlist, which is agape. Hi, why fly? Why is agape so important? Because you own the love of Jesus Christ. That's why it's so important. It's not that you're going to be in a cloud somewhere, necessarily away from fire and smoke and stink and ugly, which is what you're going to escape. It's more than that. You're going to escape that, plus you're going to have the warm love of Jesus in your heart. Woo! That's prosperity. That's comfort. And we can do, can do, can do. The ability is there. All you got to do is eat the commandments, and you can do. Let's move on to bond slave. Paul mentions bond slave. It's a very important term. It refers to kinsman redeemer and you being purchased. You don't own yourself. You were in jail and you were headed to prison. The master came and bailed you out. 
He removed your sin from your record. Case dismissed. Now he owns you. But it's, it's the most wonderful ownership that you could ever have. The person that owns you and demands service is Mr. Love. So who doesn't mind serving Mr. Love? He's easy to he's easy to serve. My parents were easy to serve. That's the point. I don't mind. Oh, you want me to go over there? The master said, "Jump." I said, "How high?" <laughs> okay, that's how this goes. You know. I'm, 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 I'm acknowledging I'm a servant, and it's based upon this servitude to the price, and, and the price I'm price conscious. I see the resurrection, and I see the success of my lawyer getting me off. All I had to do was kneel and confess that I'm really no good and that, that I, want, I want to be loved and I want to be forgiven and, and I want to hang around Jesus, and it was done. It was a done deal. It wasn't very difficult. That's one reason why I push agape here big time because that's the big, the big prize here. And we can go to John 17... Uh, uh, what did the master say? Probably the biggest part of John 17. The last scripture of the chapter. And I have declared unto them thy name. Okay, he's declared God saves. And he's, and he's saving right now. That's the point. And will declare it. That the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them. There's the big issue. The gospel brings the love of God to people. Let's move on. We can, we can park here for a while. Because this is a heavy hitter. The last scripture in John 17 is a, a heavy hitter in your Bible. Because, because after we've talked and we've talked and we've, we've identified this and we've identified the obstacle course and we identified nature and, you know, whatever you identified, you know, prophecy, whatever, the bottom line is, did you get the goods? That the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them. Woo! There you go. I was talking with a lady here at the, at, the, at the gas station the other day, and I mentioned that, and the, and the lady basically said that she doesn't really understand what I'm talking about. She was saying that, that she wanted to love life. That's what Christianity was for. That's dangerous. Because that is not exactly loving God. That's the point. Now you, now you can be appreciative of life and, and enjoy it and still have Father's love. That's not the point. Let's move on. Bond slaves is a big issue. Uh, sheep. What, what, what is, what, 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 why does the Bible mention sheep? Uh, what does that mean? It means that sheep are easily led. And, and, and let's talk about that for a moment. Now we have a positive perspective on the good shepherd, the new king. He is the king of Rome now for these citizens of Rome and Corinthians, which I'm referencing both of these books right now. And that you are hearing the herald, Oye, 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 hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Listen up and become one of his sheep. And here's the deal. People can be misled. And when Adam and Eve fell, they opened themselves up to a giant Pandora's box. 
whereby they are now going to be in subjection in general to a million lies. That's why the Bible says subject to vanity. What does that mean? That means that you are now under the megaphone in school and home television of lies. And you can't get out of it. Now, if you're an Israelite and you're subjected to the Lord, you're going to escape a lot of lies. If you're a Christian here and you live in Rome or Corinth, I'm, I'm, I'm referencing two books here at the same time. If you listen to the voice of the Lord, go to the Son, serve the Son, love the Son, listen, do what you're told, uh, you're going to lose the lies. But it all starts with submission to the Lord Israelite status. And the commonwealth is, is you lose lies and you become intelligent. You have an intelligent leader now. I am the good shepherd. My sheep, they hear my voice. That's why we're listening to Bible study right now. And I call them and they follow and they have eternal life and they shall never die because you ain't living bread. My father gave them unto me and no one can snatch them out of my hand. Woo! I'll be right back for the last video. This is taking more than I, longer than I planned. That's okay. Maranatha, we'll be right back.